Whenever you uncover an indicator of compromise, aka IOC, during your investigation, if time permits, it is important to go beyond a reputation check using a site like VirusTotal. Instead, you'll want to dig a bit deeper, again, if time permits, to try and reveal additional IOCs used by an attacker. If this is your first time watching my video, hello, my name is Steven and I have over eight years of experience in cybersecurity focusing within the security operations domain. On this channel, you'll find content ranging from career guidance to lab walkthroughs like this one and hands-on projects that you can add onto your portfolio. In today's video, we'll be working through a lab from cyber defenders called Iced ID. In this lab, we're given a hash of a particular file, and it's our job to dig deeper and see what we can uncover from this one hash. Let's get started. To get started, you want to head over to cyberdefenders.org and create an account if you haven't done so already. Once you've successfully signed into your account, you want to head over to the search tab and type in iced ID. And we'll click on the first one here. Before we go and download the lab files, let's take a look at the scenario. It says a cyber threat group was identified for initiating widespread phishing campaigns to distribute further malicious payloads. The most frequently encountered payloads were iced ID. You have been given a hash of an iced ID sample for the purpose of analyzing and monitoring the activities of this advanced persistent threat, aka APT group. Now that we've gone over this scenario, let's go ahead and download our lab files. I'll download this right onto my desktop. And do keep in mind of the password as well, which is right here. It says unzip the file with password cyberdefenders.org. I'll right click my file and I'll click on extract all. Click on extract. And the password is cyberdefenders.org. And here we have a file called hash.txt. So I'll go ahead and open this up. And here we have our file hash. Heading back over to our cyber defenders, let's take a look at the questions. The first question, it says, what is the name of the file associated with the given hash? Well, what I'll be using is VirusTotal to help us with our analysis. And I'll type in virustotal.com. And from there, I'll copy the hash that was provided to us and I'll paste it into VirusTotal. Now, as of recording, we can see that a couple of vendors had flagged this as malicious, 42 to be precise. And looking at the threat category, it says Trojan, Downloader, the family labels, X97M, Iced ID, and MS Excel. Going back to the question again, it says, what is the name of the file associated with the given hash? Well, if you haven't used VirusTotal before, it provides you with a lot of information. We can go over to details. And if we look at the basic properties, it provides us with a bunch of different hashes. And that is always good to know, just in case. Taking a look at the history, we can see the creation time of when this particular file was created. And as we can see, it was created back in 2006, 09, 16. Scrolling down just a bit here, we have our names. So these would be the file names associated with this file hash. Going over to Cyber Defenders, we can see that it is looking for a file starting with doc. And looking at it, this is the one that starts with doc. So go ahead and copy that. And let's paste that for the answer of question one. Question number two, can you identify the file name of the GIF or GIF file that was deployed? Can you identify the file name? Okay, going back over to virus total, if we scroll down, we don't really see anything else. So I'll scroll all the way up and click on relations. This tab will show us all of the related activity for this particular file. For example, under the contacted URLs, we do see a couple of URLs here. And what this means is that this file was seen contacting these particular URLs. And right at the bottom, we have contacted domains, contacted IP addresses, and also bundled files. There should be another one. Yes, right here. And this is called dropped files. So if this file were to be opened or executed, these files were observed dropping to disk. And sometimes during your investigations, you can actually use this as a pivot point. And you can also scope out additional endpoints that might be compromised with the same or similar malware. Let's go back all the way up and looking at the contacted URLs, 
We can see that there are quite a bit of URLs that end in 3003.gif, and that would likely be our answer. 3003 and submit. Nice. Question number three. How many domains does the malware look to download the additional payload file in question number two? Well, all we need to do is count the individual URLs that end in 3003. So there's one, two, three, four, and five. The answer to this will be five. On to number four. What is the MD5 hash of the executable in question two downloaded from metaflip.io? Okay, question number two was this answer here, 3003, and we're looking for Metaflip, which is right here. So I'll go ahead and click on that. And as a recording, there are 13 vendors that flag this as malicious. Going under details, under the category, we have it as known infection source, command and control, malware sites, and compromised websites. So if you ever see an endpoint reaching out to Metaflip.io, that could be kind of suspicious. Looking at our history, we do get a first submission, which was back on 2021, March 30th on 2006.19 UTC time. The last submission and last analysis dates, I don't really care too, too much about it, but what I'm most interested in is the first submission. If we scroll down, we have a final URL, which is pretty cool. And we also have the IP address of this domain. Now, the question was asking for the MD5 hash of the executable. And looking at virus total, there really isn't any MD5 hash. I mean, we do see a body SHA-256, but that isn't what we're looking for. Scrolling all the way up, click on associations. We see that this URL is associated with Emotet. There's also a report that was done by Trend Micro and another report at the bottom. Clicking on community. Mao phishing campaign via malicious link back in April 2021. Again, no MD5 hash. So what do we do? Well, the next step that I would do here is just remove all of this except for our domain of interest. Just like that. I would search metaflip.io on VirusTotal. And we get 13 vendors flagging this as malicious. Clicking on details. If I scroll down, we do have some Google search results. We have an any run result, malware analysis for metaflip.io. Oh, this is the one that popped up earlier. So I'll go ahead and take a look at that. The final verdict for any run is malicious activity. The analysis date was back on April 8th, 2024. Now I am curious to know if I can find anything earlier or closer to the date of the first submission, which again was back on 2021, March 30th. We do have an MD5 file hash here, but it doesn't really say that it's an executable. And if I scroll down, there is no malware configuration, no data. And yeah, it seems like this site has expired and may be available at auction. <laughs> okay, so this might not be the one that we're looking for. I'll go ahead and close this one out. And let's see, October 8th, 2024. Oh, this is a write-up. We don't want that. April 7th, 2021. This could be pretty good. And March 30th, 2021. Ooh, let's go over there. And this might be the one that we're actually, no, it's not. Now I say it might be the one because it was on March 30th, but our question is looking for an executable. And as you can see here, this file is actually a .xlsm file, AKA a Microsoft Excel file. So that is not what we want. Let's see, May 10th, that is not it. I will go to the next page and ooh, March 30th, 2021. And here we have a post created by Jay Rusin saying more iced ID, DocuSign Lure, and XLSM in zip. We do have our domain of interest. And if I scroll down, we do see any run and triage. I'll go ahead and click on any run. And let's take a look at the analysis that was done. The start date was back on March 30th, 2021, 1953 which I believe is pretty close to our first analysis date. So the first submission date for this URL was back on March 30th at 2006. And if we look at any run, this was done seven minutes before virus total. Clicking on the play video, we can see a play-by-play -play that any run had captured. So once the Excel document was opened, immediately, look at that, wow. Executable files were dropped, child processes were created. We can see a run DLL, and clearly this is a fake DocuSign document. That's pretty awesome. 
Looking on the right hand side, we got a lot of processes here and we can see all of the child processes that spawned from the single Excel file. And it definitely is looking quite nasty. <laughs> looking at our HTTP request, we can see that there was a callout to the partsapp.com, but I'm more interested in the one right above it, which is this. We can see metaflip.io and it got a 200 OK status code. On the right hand side, we can see that there is a content where it says 78 kilobytes executable. Clicking on that, we can see the MIME type is application-x-dos-exec. And this is likely our file of interest. Let's go ahead and copy the MD5 file hash for this. And I'll paste it in our question number four. Sweet. Now, again, just to quickly recap, the reason why I think that this was the file of interest is because our question was asking for an executable. And if we take a look here, the MIME type is actually an executable. And if you're not convinced, you can take a look at the magic number and it has MZ. And if we scroll down, PE header, we can see that the signature is PE, making this an executable file. And again, that is why I select the MD5 hash for that particular executable as my answer. Question number five, from the domains mentioned in question number three, a DNS registrar was predominantly used by the threat actor to host their harmful content, enabling the malware's functionality. Can you specify the registrar's inc, I guess incorporated? INC? <laughs> hmm. Well, the keyword here is predominantly. So more than once. That's how I interpret that anyways. And question number three. So that was this. How many domains does the malware look to download? Oh, okay. The additional payloads from 3003. What I'll do is head back over to virus total. Let's click back until we reach our hash that was provided to us. Go back over to relations and take a look at our contacted URLs. The ones that we're most interested in are the ones that end in 3003. So we have Columbia, Parts App, Metaflip, Taj, I'm not gonna pronounce that, and I'm not going to pronounce this one either. <laughs> so taking a look at the contacted domains here, we have our registrar information. Now let's take a look at the Columbia one. This one has a registrar of launchpad.com, okay, Parts App, this one has, I don't see it, so I'll click on the three dots. We're looking for parts app. And here we go, we found it right here. The registrar is blank. Okay, I guess we don't really care too much about that. Metaflip, same thing, blank. And these last two URLs here, the one that starts with a T and the one that starts with an A, and that is Namecheap and Namecheap. Okay, I think this is the answer. Because again, the keyword is predominantly, AKA more than one. Go ahead and paste that in. Name cheap, ink, and hit submit. Okay, wrong answer. Answer format is this. So I don't think it's asking for the ink. Nice. Question number six, could you specify the threat actor linked to the sample provided? And it gave us a hint starting with G. Going back over to virus total here. Let's search up our hash on Google and see what we can find. We get an any run analysis, Mauer Bazaar, a trend micro report. This could be interesting. Click into that and let's take a look here. So after reading this and scrolling down a bit, I do see it mention a threat actor group called TA551 that is known to be using iced ID for a banking Trojan. And this group is called Shathack, but it doesn't start with a G. Instead, what I'll do here is double click the TA551, right click and search Google for this particular threat actor group. And take a look at that. Miter attack says TA551 and gold cabin. If we select that and look at the associated groups on the right, we can see that it says gold cabin and shat hack that we saw earlier. And gold cabin does indeed start with a G, so this is likely our answer. Paste that in, hit submit. Perfect, one more question to go. In the execution phase, what function does the malware employ to fetch extra payloads onto the system? Whenever you see the execution phase, you can infer that they're talking about the MITRE ATT&CK framework. And one site that I love to take a look at that provides a lot of details about a particular file is Joe Sandbox. Over to our virus total, let's copy the file hash. 
and I'll type in joesandbox.com. Exit out this window and at the top under search, let's go ahead and paste in our hash and hit enter. Now we do have one search result. What I want is the full report. And what I like about Joe's Sandbox is that it has a miter attack matrix, which you can find right here. And again, taking a look at our question, it is asking for the execution phase. If we take a look at Joe's Sandbox, under the execution phase, we have exploitation for client execution. Clicking on that, it would provide us with a description of why an adversary would use this particular technique. Scrolling down, we do see signatures, and it has document exploit detected with a name URL download to file. And that right there is our function name. And if we were to highlight this, right click and search Google, we could see that the function is right here. It says downloads bits from the internet and saves them to a file. Pretty sneaky. Copy that and we'll paste that in here. Awesome. We just completed the Iced ID challenge. Isn't it fascinating how much information we can uncover from just a single hash? By taking the time to dig deeper, we can begin to track threats and their activities. With this newfound knowledge, you'll be able to create better detection opportunities, identify ways to reduce your attack surface, and implement policies that help mitigate the risk of a potential compromise. That is it for the video and I hope that you found that informative. If you did, let me know by hitting that like button and subscribe if you want to. Remember to stay curious and do things differently.